Hello everyone and welcome back to a new video in our modeling analysis and design of a reinforced concrete pre-stressed bridge which is actually going to be a part of a bigger series which is the modeling analysis and design of highway bridges however we are still starting with a small sample to understand autoless structural bridge design in order for us to use it hopefully in the design of the highway bridge. Now this is of course the second video in this little sub-series and you can check out all the videos and the link I will be posting with the top right. And it's a playlist actually, two playlists. The first one is the full um, bridge series and the second one is only the Autodesk Structural Bridge Design series. So without further delay, I hope you enjoy the video. So sit back, relax and enjoy the show. Alright, so first things first, we are going to start a new project, so I click on the new button, of course this is the GUI, and in the new button I'm going to define me a project, this time I will be using the Eurocode with the UK Annex, and we're going to design using the Eurocode, you could actually push the UK, UK Annexes directly, which will specify uh, the Eurocode to follow the UK Annex. Now you could also choose the Eurocode, in this case there is no UK Annex. Strangely there is no German Annex, so well, I will select the UK Annex. We're gonna have a project, so you don't need to click this. If you click this, this means you want a single design beam. I want a project, so I click the project and click the new button or OK, which loads the new project. OK, now here I have to follow some steps. The first step I like to do in whenever I have any software where I want to do a professional project, is to go file and the title and modify this uh, labels basically. I could call it for example here uh, pre-stressed pre-cast beam project for example here. You can even add a subtitle for example say here like uh, part of the bridge video series and job title sample bridge calculations by Dr. CEE or basically that's recorder guy now so CEE recorder. It doesn't work so okay CEE and I'll click OK, and this is going to basically be the header of most of my projects. I click OK so that we have defined this thing. Now, when I finish, I will save the file and I will upload the file for you for your further consideration. And you will see this file in the video description uploaded on my drive. All right. So now I told you before in the first, first video of the series, which I'll be linking at the top right, that if you follow the steps step by step, you will reach a full design of the structure. Now we will start at materials here. There are no materials, so I right click here and select add and start adding materials. So I click on concrete parabola rectangle and here I'll be using uh, the euro code of course. And uh, let's see, we have said that we want uh, 32 over 40. So if you click here and say 32, the program calculates for you all the other values based on the code equations. That's okay. So I have 32 over 40, that's my first concrete. I'll add another concrete. This one is 50 over 60. So if you add here 50 and just tab out, it will empty. It will calculate the rest of the values, 50 over 60. I'll just click OK here. Now we have our two concretes. I still need some steel, so I right click here and add me some reinforcement. Now you can see that there are some groups. You can see concrete, reinforcing steel, pre stress, modular ratios, structural steel, and steel strain. Uh, stress strain diagrams. I will select here a reinforcement steel. Now I should select reinforcing steel incline, but you can actually select horizontal and then change it using incline. So if you, for example, let me show you. If you select horizontal like this and then add and then right click here, you can change the type to inclined. Of course, you can go back and change the type to uh, horizontal. If I click OK here first. You can change the type to horizontal again if you want. So that's that. Now I will double click here because I just accepted it. It's inclined now. We could also just add here and select inclined in one step. So I will keep it now. I have my inclined stress, my inclined steel. And here for my inclined steel, I'm going to try follow the steel we have in the codes. So I opened here the property definition. Now here I want to add and change some things. First of all, the FT over FY is going to be 1.15. I got those from the code values. Now what is this 1.15 I added? You see, this is the steel stress strain curve that is being assumed for the structure, for the steel. You can see it follows a bilinear equation. You have a linear behavior until the yield point, and then another linear behavior until the ultimate point. And the idea behind it is that, well, you have 500 megapas megapascals and from it you can define ft over fy which will change the height of the diagram for example if you say one here then you get or you cannot if you say 1.01 here you get almost a horizontal length line here meaning that well you have uh, a perfectly 
plastic element. Now this 1.15 is taken from the code, so I'll keep it like this. The elastic strain is 0.05, so 5%. And I think that's everything that I wanted to change here. There's NDP values. You can change them. You don't need to change them. Those are the national annex. And because we are using the United Kingdom annex, it will automatically uh, set them to the United Kingdom national annex. If you have a German national annex, you can actually switch those because there is no direct code with a German annex. So you could set those values to the German annex and then export them for later use or import if you have something exported already. I'll not touch that, I'll keep it. So yeah, that's our steel. I click OK now. This is my reinforcement steel. I right click on properties again, add and add this time a pre-stressing steel. I select the horizontal here. So I click on that and let's think and let's take a look on what is happening here. So this is called the 0.1% proof strength and that's the characteristic tensile strength. Now the characteristic tensile strength is okay, but the proof strength is incorrect. I will select 1600 megapascals. Now, what is the meaning of the 0.1% proof strength? It basically means the amount of stress you need to apply to cause a 0.01 permanent damage or permanent strain in it. This is the yield strain, it seems. This is the yield strain. This is the linear behavior of the pre-stressing tendon. You can see that the yield strain is at 1391 in the ULS and 1440 in the SLS and the corresponding strain. After that, you will have the nonlinear behavior. You will have the other line, kind of like the steel double click here. You can see a linear part and a nonlinear part. So what is happening here is that the 0.1% proof strength is at 1600 means the stress at which you would have a permanent strain of 0.001, meaning that if you release the force, it will go back all the way until you have a permanent strain of 0.001 from it we can calculate the rest of the factors. For relaxation class, I select class one. Now those classes have meanings and those relaxation classes are given here. You can see this from the Eurocode equation. I think it's 328 or something, Eurocode 2 part 11. Uh, I think this is EN1992-1-1 and gives you in the equation exactly what the class one, class two and class three means. The relaxations of each one of those classes so I'll select class one, although you could select any class, which of course depends on the vendor, and what you have. You can see what that exactly means here. I will not dive into it because I think you should know this from the Euro code. So that's that. This is the relaxation losses, how much it loses after 1000 hours and so on. Those are values I will just keep. And yeah, those are the factors. For example, the stress limit factor, the initial pre-stress force and the initial pre-stress force for K8. There are two cases for that. So I'll just keep it as is. Those have meanings in the code. Fantastic. So I think we defined our materials. If you want to define structural steel, you can. I don't think it's a must here because you don't have steel, but if you want, you can just right click here, add, and you can add structural steel, which is here. And I'll just add me here, structural steel, just for good looks so that you can see. The structural tree here is gonna be S355. So I'll just add this. And that's it, now you have my S355. So that's the definition of the materials. Now I will save my file, which I will of course upload for you. All right, so basically this ends our video today, which is gonna be about material definition. And I hope that you enjoyed the video. Please notice that this is gonna be a smaller video series, which will come out in quick succession because we are trying to cover a simplified bridge first before we try to dive into the big guns. So we'll talk, we'll talk about the highway bridge series later once we establish some basics in the simpler bridges. Now, I know that I am usually a little bit slower in pushing out those videos, but this video series is something I will do a rapid fire for, so you can expect quicker progression in this video series. So yeah, that's basically everything I want to talk about today. I hope you enjoyed the video. And in the end, I want to give a grade 1600 sized shout out to my dear channel members in the contributor level and the helper level whose names are going to be shown on the screen. I want to thank them from the bottom of my heart as the support of the channel is priceless to me and enables me to provide you with videos hopefully on time and with a certain quality I try to achieve and for that I am forever thankful. In the end, I hope that you enjoyed the video and you found it beneficial. If you have enjoyed the video, then please consider liking, sharing, subscribing, commenting and so on, especially subscribing because it helps increase the reach of my channel. As per usual, this is the Civil Engineering Essentials channel and we'll catch you in the next video. Bye-bye.